Now, what's interesting about this, I've always, in, in my teachings, talked about the third chakra being swaha and the introverted triangle. One day when I was uh, doing a, 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 um, a talk in, that in, uh, in uh, Slovenia, it was a Darshan, matter of fact, um, a friend of mine, he's a, quite a famous Austrian painter, and he was in the audience and um, he was sitting right over, if I'm face on, he was sitting to my left, right over in the corner. And um, he took several photographs of me. And what was really interesting was that uh, when he looked at them, they were just like normal photographs on the side. He didn't think no more for a week or so, and then he re-looked at them. And they completely had changed. I'm going to need to stand up to show you these. This is what appeared. Now this is the photograph you took, you see, from the side. Yeah, and I'm just here doing the darshans. These are the ones, exactly the same photos that changed. The first one you could see a triangle, introverted triangle, and the third chakra, swaha, like an eye. And then you see these others changing as well. But what's interesting, if you look above me, you can see a veranda. And on these verandas, what you can see is people. People looking down. Now, if you look on this picture, there's no veranda. That's the scene, there's no veranda. So what we captured was the spirit world. And these spirit people are looking down and listening. To, to my talk and demonstration. The picture next to it, this was my T-shirt, uh, uh, as I was given a talk. Uh, there was quite a big audience, a few hundred people. And uh, it was quite warm, so I, I lifted up my top to look, and I noticed some, my white T-shirt turned pink. So I took it up uh, off, and I held it up to the audience, and you can see big splashes of pink all over it. Now, pink is divine love, that is the heart chakra, yeah? So when you develop these powers, ah, it's so much that can happen. We have many others, and um, what's really interesting is that your aura doesn't lie. It doesn't matter what comes out of your mouth. Look, you can lie to yourself, you can lie to your family, you can lie to your friends, but how do you lie to God? You can't. So, your aura cannot lie. So after I received Shiva consciousness, the manifestations around me, the, um, the light around me, my aura, changed. And it changed to um, silver and blue. And what you can see on these ones, is when I'm talking and working, you can see the blue and the silver. And you can see this light coming down here. And when you see it properly, it's like a, a, a cross coming through, like a golden cross. Well, you have the Father, which is silver. You have the Son, the Son, which is the blue. And you have the Holy Ghost, which is gold. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So I, I actually received that level and I still work with it. And what I find, or what I found, when that energy changed, was the immense power that came with it. Um, I think at some stage I spoke to you about bhakti, and I spoke about power bhakti. And I said the difference between bhakti and power bhakti is, in bhakti, God's will is my will, but my will is not God's will. In power bhakti, my will is God's will, and God's will is my will. So, when I first received this level of energy, um, the first thing that actually happened was quite interesting. I had my lawyer staying at, with me, and it was um, early evening, and um, she was standing outside, and I came out to talk to her, 
And at that time, we had a load of bats in, 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 the, in, in the roof, and they kept coming out to fly around. And one of these bats hit the wall, and it broke its neck and dropped dead. So in, in front of uh, um, my lawyer. See, this is how God works. It's very strange. So she picked the bat up, and you could see it was dead. You, she, you could see it was dead. And uh, she said to me, can't you do something? I said, well, what do you want me to do? I, you know, it's dead, I can't do it. And she kept going on and on at me. And I kept saying, look, it's dead. So eventually I took it off of her just to prove a point that I couldn't do anything. And I shook it and its neck was broken and you know, whatever. And so I put my hands on it and I went blah, 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 blah. And the thing come back to life. Couldn't believe it. Now, was it just knocked out? No, it wasn't just knocked out. It was dead. So that was the first shock with this new energy. The second shock was greater. Uh, and that was bringing back people from the dead, twice to different people, in front of witnesses. Uh, I'm going to tell you one case because it was a real sad case. I was working in the surgery and my son knocked on the surgery door and uh, Emma was with me and the patient was on the bed. And Jason said, you better come out, there's something going on in the courtyard. Uh, so we come out and uh, there was this woman just crying by her car, saying my daughter is dead, my daughter is dead. My daughter is dead from a brain tumor. My, my daughter is dead. So, you know, she, they brought her daughter, I don't know if it was out the morgue or out of the hospital, about a two and a half, three hour drive, brought her down, and I looked in the back, there was this woman of about 32, 33, very quite big, laying on, on, on the back, you know, dead. Wow, what do you do, you know? I said, look, take her back to the hospital, well, I, I, what am I supposed to do? And she said to me, Stephen, we know you can bring her back, we know you can bring her back. I said, look, I, you know, I can't, you know, take her to the hospital. Where well, mother kept screaming and screaming. So we, we, we put a, a blanket on the ground and we got the, managed to get the girl out of the uh, car onto the ground. And, uh, mother was screaming, I can still hear the screams now. Um, and I kept saying, look, please take her back. I didn't want to say to the morgue. I said, take her back to the hospital. Um, so I started to do a certain yoga practice. And um, I tapped her solar plexus, nothing. i done this five, six times, nothing. And I kept saying to her, look, I, I can't do anything. Take her back to the hospital. And the mother was still screaming at me, Stephen, we know you can bring her back. We know you can bring her back. This woman had more faith in me than I had faith in myself. That taught me a hell of a lesson. Okay, so I thought I'd do it one more time. And I, I, I said a certain mantra and I tapped her and she came back. And she opened her eyes and her eyes were rolling around in her head. Couldn't believe it. I thought it was more shocked than mother or me. Anyway, we managed to stand her up and we took her into the surgery. Laid her on the bed. And I'm just scanning her energy field. And I could see what I believe was death still in her aura. So I run my left hand down the side of her body and as I hit this black mass, it struck me, and I had a burn mark and a and a, 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 a um, like a a wound across my left and left fingers here, and it started bleeding. I just in front of witnesses. I managed to get, uh, and then death was happy that it's drawn some blood, and it left. And we managed to get the girl back again, and she was, seemed to be okay, and they uh, took her home. I never, in truth, I never heard another thing from it. I don't know who she was, where they come from. No idea. I know it was up north somewhere they come from. But I never heard another word from her. 
That was quite a major one. The first one that I had was um, was quite amazing. I was working in uh, Switzerland, and I was very busy. We had four beds, hundreds of people lining up to see me, and. Um, a woman in her 70s at least, maybe 80s, came in uh, and she was really thin and they put her on the bed and as she lays down, I, I remember just standing there, as she lay down she went <sighs> and died on the bed. Eyes open, mouth open. And uh, one of the people next to the organisers is, is a medical guy. and. Uh, he says, Stephen, she's dead. Well, you can imagine what was going through my mind. Yeah, I said, look, just leave her, leave her, leave her for now. So I worked to the other three beds oh, for at least 35, 40 minutes. And in between that time, uh, this gentleman kept saying, Stephen, look, what we're going to do, she's died, she's dead. What are we going to do? And I'll be honest, I didn't know what to do. Um, then one of the organisers, women organisers, come up to me and said, Stephen, we're going to have to call an ambulance. I said, no, don't call an ambulance, I'll come over. What, in fairness, what was going through my mind was, Jesus, you know the national newspapers tomorrow, don't you? Healer kills woman. I've not even touched her. Healer kills woman. That's, I, could, I could just see the headlines. So I am... Um, I went over to her and uh, I looked at her and by this time her lips were mauve, really mauve, her face was white and mauve, you know. And, um, whew. so um, I'd done a mantra and, um, and I, I, I tapped her solar plexus and she came back after about 40 minutes, not breathing, nothing, she came back. And uh, all the colour come back to her, her lips started to go back from mauve. And anyway, eventually she can get off the bed and uh, the daughter, uh, oh no, after that they, they called an ambulance, that's right, they called an ambulance. And they took her to the hospital. We got a phone call about, about two days later, saying, uh, from the daughter, who was with the mother at the time, saying, look, they took her in the hospital. Uh, they've scanned her, done everything, and all the cancer had gone. All the cancer had gone. But she had to die to release her karma so the cancer would go. So that was the first one we did. The, 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 the other one I told you was the second one. So these are the two so far, or three things, uh, powerful things that have happened when I move into power bhakti. Other things have happened, materialisations, and yeah, of course. But these things are very powerful. Because these are only the words of Jesus, didn't he? He says, go out and heal the sick and raise the dead. That's his orders. Why is it okay for Jesus and his followers to do that? And people like us are deemed um, evil when we do such things. First of all, I can't do anything. I, I can't heal you. I can't do anything. Only God can do it. I cannot heal cancer, I cannot heal your bad back, I can do nothing. Only God can do it. Now, common sense tells you that I cannot be doing this work for 50 years and still be doing it if nothing happens for people. That's just common sense. You know, it doesn't matter. And what you find that when you become well known or famous, whatever words you want to call it, people always want to bring you down. They will always want to bring you down. I've had newspapers after me, I've had television after me, come undercover, do dreadful things on me, not interested in the truth, not interested. But God bless them. If that's what they need, God bless them. You know, I work for God and that's all I know and I'm very happy for that. So I'll give you a little bit of an insight of some of the phenomena. We've got hundreds of these pictures and remarkable things with the fish and water and I can go on and on and on telling you about these things but I think that's enough for now. God bless you all.